guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for another bit of a working in my Autumn Altered book. And I want to focus on the cover today. So um, just decorating the cover of this Altered book here. Um, so what I have brought along and what I thought that I'm going to do with this cover, I think, is just paint over it. And then I'm hoping to decorate it with one or two bits as well. So I've brought along just some um, like acrylic paints. So this is... Oh, this is just an ivory colour and it's just a flat, you know, matte paint. And then I've got a couple of metallic paints here, which um, I can't... Uh, Blue-green, iridescent blue-green, this one's called, and this one is just iridescent copper. And I'm going to kind of try and mix in... Well, not mix them in, but have touches of those colours kind of going around here as well. Now, I have to be a little bit careful that I don't end up painting the lace that's obviously kind of just overhanging slightly. So I just need to be careful of that. Now, I have got my my paint palette here. I don't know whether I'll end up using it, but <laughs> I've just brought it along. So I'm just going to put a little dab of the metallic copper and the metallic iridescent blue green and I'm hoping this is going to be a sort of good colour for this journal I might be might be wrong when I come to do it so all I'm going to do obviously if you watched before I have already painted around the edges of this but I wasn't sure how I wanted to actually um you know decorate the cover so I thought I might have been putting paper or something on it um but to be honest I do quite like the look of altered books with painted covers so I'm just going to paint over this and I have only bought in this acrylic paint rather than that household emulsion that I had been using only because I've taken the emulsion back downstairs and I'm just being lazy and can't be bothered to go and get it. So otherwise I would have probably just continued on with the, you know, the household paint to be perfectly honest. Um, but, you know, this is fine. This is going to hopefully be, you know, a nice rich colour for this anyway. So hopefully it's going to, you know, look really, really nice. So might need a bit more and then I'm going to just dry this off with my heat tool so just going all over like that oh, it's really chilly here today I know that I always film ahead so again I know I always say this but just in case you think I'm lying you know if you're in the UK and it's glorious weather where you are I'm filming ahead. So today, this is the kind of first week that the weather has really broken. And um, I think it went down to like seven degrees last night, which was quite a shocker because at the beginning of the week, it was still like 23. So it's a little bit of a contrast. Right. So what I'm going to do is just dry this with my heat tool and then I'll be back. Right. So I'm back. I'm now um, covered in paint, but you know, that's fine. I don't mind. So I may do another coat. I'm just kind of wondering, or do I want to kind of put in some of the other colours now? Um, let's have a little look. Well, the other thing that I do have is I've got somewhere behind me. In fact, no, I think I've put it on here now. I have got this autumn, autumnal stamp, which I'm wondering whether I could kind of paint across here and stamp off with this. I don't know whether this is going to work. This might be an epic fail. And one of those things that I just wish that I'd never started or never never tried to attempt on film at least. But um, it might look okay. So you don't know unless you try, do you? So let's just try this. I'm not too worried if I don't get the whole stamp. And this is an old stamp, so, you know, I'm not too worried about it. I wouldn't probably do this on a brand new stamp. There we go. It's not too bad. Might need to go on a bit heavier with the paint. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, well, it comes out quite nicely, actually. So, yeah, I'm quite quite chuffed with that. So, right, let me just get rid of this sheet of book paper. And then we're just going to do that again. So, oops, I nearly used the wrong brush. So we just then paint over it again. 
And as I say, I mean, if it looks terrible on the cover and it doesn't come out nicely, it's no problem. We can just paint over it and cover it back up. So it's just, you know, worth trying these things. And, you know, don't be, don't be worried in case they don't turn out because you can just then cover them up. You won't be stuck with them. Now, the only thing is, I don't know how this is going to stamp. Oh, <laughs> well, now we do know. So it missed out the middle bit completely, which was a bit of a shame. I wonder if I can just go in there nope okay so right what's happening is because this had a kind of ledge obviously it didn't then stamp in this middle bit obviously the journal's quite bumpy and lumpy so it's not then you know it's not pressing down so that's a bit of a shame so I'll just stamp that off and I'll probably wash this after I finish the video so I'm just going to put it down down to the side so that I don't forget to actually wash it well that's fine I I don't mind that that didn't really work so <laughs> Okay, back to the drawing board. So what I might do then is just dab around in some places here. Maybe just on the corners, in fact. I think I'll just go in with my fingers. I was trying to be a bit more um, professional, but sometimes I just think fingers are best, really, aren't they? So, And then a bit along the spine as well. And to be honest, you know, although that stamping didn't really work, obviously, as I'd hoped, I don't dislike this part. So, you know, all was not lost. It's still got some nice, nice elements there. So, you know, it's not a complete, complete waste of time. OK, so I'll go down there. And then what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of the blue. Again, best dab that off and just maybe go in. Just like, you know, here and there, maybe a bit, a bit here. And maybe a bit down here. And as I say, these are um, metallic, metallic paints. So, you know, they've got quite a nice sort of effect on them. Okay. Oops, just go down this side as well. And this is quite nice because it's obviously bringing the teal in that's obviously inside the book, which, you know, is really nice, isn't it? Uh, maybe a little bit here. Maybe going up, up that side. Okay. Okay, so I'm quite liking that. So what I'll do is just do the spine whilst I'm here. Oops. I'm just going to paint along that with the brush so I'm just doing that in the in the neutral color and then I will dry this off again and then we'll do the the back and then obviously we'll um, get decorating the front so I'll be back in a couple of moments once I've dried that okay so now I'm just going to paint the back exactly as we did the front so again, just with the the ivory, oops, I mean this is quite a dark ivory I must say, but that's fine. Okay, so again just, you know, not sort of worrying too much about it, just pasting over. Now obviously this book is actually, you know, this has got like a sort of cover over the actual sort of hardboard. I have done this quite often with books that are a much more um, like rustic cover, I suppose is the word. And actually, if I'm honest, they probably work out much better with this painting technique than this one is. So, you know, you can do it on all those different book covers. I mean, the only thing that you probably wouldn't be able to kind of particularly do it on is um, if it was particularly, you know, a glossy kind of cover that might not really work but I mean this one had a bit of a sheen to it as you know I kind of sanded it down a little bit before even starting but well now I'm saying that I actually can't remember whether I did do that or not but hopefully hopefully I did and I'm not just now talking rubbish well it wouldn't surprise me if I was but it's hard to remember to be honest what you do 
from one day to the next and you know as crafters I know that loads of you have been saying about all the unfinished projects that you've got on your desks as well so I know that I'm not alone in that you know we're all working on multiple projects so I mean actually to remember what you've done in one thing as opposed to something else is quite hard I think so yeah that's my excuse right so just get that looking sort of part way okay and I will be back after drying this. Okay, so that's my back cover. So again, I'm just going to pick up just a few kind of bits of the um, metallic colors here. So again, just kind of going around the corners and then just a little bit kind of here, down the spine a bit. Just so it kind of mirrors the front really. So again, just along the edge like that. Oops, just got some frays from the lace there, so just pull those out and then just down here. You know, really not worrying at all about how this is kind of looking or going. And then again, just going to pick up a little bit of the blue and just dab the blue kind of in one or two places. <clears throat> like that. Dokey. Maybe a bit more of the bronze just there. Otherwise, I just fear that the back will be, you know, really plain kind of compared to the front. So, also, I've just got some places here where it's a bit thin on the ground, the paint. So, it's quite good to be able to just cover it up with a bit of a bit of the colour there. Okay. So, I'm just going to dry this off. And um, actually, I, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go to the spine. Mm -hmm. And then I can do the spine as, as well at the same time. So I think what I'm going to do, obviously you can see I've already dabbed some paint by accident on there. So I'm just going to go around the spine with this gorgeous blue colour. Okay. Quite a bit on there. I love this blue. It's such a gorgeous colour, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely stunning colour. Okie dokie. So just edging that off. Right, and I don't think I'm going to have any bronze, although actually I've just decided I'm going to have a little bit just here, right at the right at the very ends of the spine, I think. And then maybe maybe get that a bit darker in there. Okay, but predominantly leaving that blue. So I will dry that now. Okay, so I am back with my cover now and it's dryish. It's it's not perfect, but it's it's dryish. Um it will hopefully do. So I can hopefully get along with um you know what we're doing now. So all I'm going to do now is distress ink it a little bit to tone it down a bit. So And again, you know, not being too particular, just going over it in, you know, random, random spots. I mean, obviously concentrating a lot on the edges. Like that. And a bit here. And then I'm just going to go down the spine to tone that right down as well. And probably a bit more on the edges and then on the back just then again focus on the edges quite a lot it's a little bit sticky I'm afraid um, in case you're wondering what that noise is because it's not quite dry it's got a bit of a tacky kind of thing going on I mean it should be dry enough to actually work with as you can see um, but that's what that noise is it's just where it's a little bit tacky still so hopefully not not too too bad Right, so that's my cover so far, and let's pull in a script type stamp, I think. I will just double check that I wouldn't prefer anything else. I mean, that leaf stamp was obviously great. The fact it was mounted on a wood block made that very tricky to use because it wasn't, um, you know, bendable and pliable so that I could kind of really make sure that I was getting it stuck down on the 
on the surface here. So I would prefer one that's not mounted because then it's going to, you know, I'm going to be able to stamp it in um, better. So I've got this one and I have got my just normal, you know, my script stamp that I use quite a lot. So I think I'm going to use this one. And again, I think what I'm going to do is use my Timber Brown. No, that's Saddle Brown, which actually that might be quite nice because it's a bit brighter. Um, nope. Oh, I've kind of tidied up all my ink pads and put them all above my desk now, so um, I thought that would be easier, but so far, oops, so far not, maybe, maybe not easier. <laughs> okay, right, let's just pop that back. Okay, right. Now I'm wondering whether Saddle Brown, maybe that dropped down, maybe that was a sign. Put in the Timber Brown back. I'm going to go with this one. Because, yeah, maybe it was a sign that that's the one to use. Who knows? Right. Check my stamps out the right way. And just, again, stamp it off on there to make sure it's, you know, producing nice, nice images. I might have stamped this already in a different colour recently because that looks a little bit green, doesn't it? I'll just stamp that off a few times so it's less green less green more brown okay okie dokie right so I'm going to stamp in here where I've got this missing section that will just hopefully cover that up a bit and then a bit down here like that and then maybe, maybe a bit there. And then let's go down this spine with the script section. I mean, it's not very visible, but just a little bit. And that just helps to cover up, obviously, any writing that was still there from the spine. And then again, just turn it over and just do some, just rough stamping on the back, just here and there. Have a little bit over here too. Okie dokie. So that's kind of got some pattern on there now. So it's got something a bit more interesting than just obviously those pink splotches. Or splotches. Okay, turn that back over. And what I'm thinking now is I've got the rest of my slip it roll, which we never did actually use. And I'm thinking we will put that on here as well. So just going to ink it up because it's not been inked up. So I'll just ink that up. Oops. I mean, most of it doesn't look too bad, but there's one or two bits that just looked quite white. So just the inking kind of, you know, brings it all together, I think. Okie dokie. Yeah, I mean, it just looks a lot better straight away for being inked, doesn't it? Whereas otherwise it was kind of, you know, not quite, not quite the right piece, I think. And then what I've got, this was one of my daughter's little skirts. I mean, actually, sadly, she hardly wore this, which was such a shame. But I mean, to be honest, you can't really get rid of new, um, you know, uh, children's used clothes. So this happens to have these couple of tassels here around the waistband. And I thought, oh, they may just be ideal for this journal so I'm just going to undo these oops well she says I might not be able to oh yeah they are coming undone I just see I mean actually they go back further than I thought so what I'm wondering is I wonder if I can oops yeah I can pull that right so I've just pulled that one I'm just going to pull this one Okay, so I'm just going to cut them off now. Oops, where's the other one? There we go. And I'm wondering if they can then be the closure for this journal. So, I mean, obviously they are quite dark brown, um, but that's fine because there are some dark browny bits inside the journal. Oops. Okay, I mean, obviously they're a little bit kind of screwed up a bit. 
where they were attached to the dress. But, I mean, I was wondering whether we could have the same sort of thing as what they had on the dress, where they just tie closed. So if I were to have that there, oops, and then this one kind of back there, I thought would be quite nice closures. So let's just, first of all, glue this on. So I'm just going to pop some glue down here. Okay, probably want it about here, I think. Okay, and then obviously I want to just trim this off because otherwise it was quite a lot to cover up in some way, shape or form. I haven't decided yet how that's going to be covered, but so that's that side there. And then this side here, we're going to just do the same. So again, just bringing that round. We want it kind of roughly the same length, probably. Oops. I mean, that's got a couple of little frayed bits where it was on the dress, but I mean, I don't mind that, so. Have it that way up, I think. So again, just gluing that down approximately here. Okay. So, I mean, the front one is actually a little bit longer than the back, but that's fine, doesn't matter. They don't have to be identical, right? Get that thread, well, oh, come on. Oops, sorry, let me just trim that thread off. Right, that's gone. So then I'm going to cover that up with the snippet there, which I think looks quite nice. Now, I'm just wondering whether I wanted anything else. So, did I have some more of that blue lace? Or have I used it all? Let me just have a look. I can't remember whether I've used it all or not. I know I've used quite a bit. I don't know whether it's completely gone. Maybe it is. Maybe it is, because I can't actually see any more for the moment. Uh, that's a shame. But I have got some ivory. So we could just kind of edge it like that which then looks quite nice, doesn't it? It just sort of finishes it off quite nicely. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. Yeah, let's do that. So let's just glue this down in place. So run the glue down. And again, want it going at a bit of an angle, not just kind of completely straight on there. But we'll just apply plenty of glue. And then we'll just have it going, you know, on the curve a little bit. Like that. Okay, you can just move that around a bit if you need to. And let me see, I've got this dark colour which and you know this is just a scrap that I haven't finished using or you know didn't finish using it inside the book and I just wonder whether we could just have that there as well just really gets it off my desk and you know possibly also adds a bit more interest to that cover doesn't it so let's just pop that down okay There we go. Press that down. Okay, and then my snippet roll is going to go here, like that. And then probably should actually mod podge this before putting it on, to be honest. Um, but having said that, I might mod podge over the entire book as well to kind of help seal it as well. So, um, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the world if I don't. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to put that there. Right, so again, I'm just going to Fabri-Tac the whole thing down. So I want quite a bit because obviously it needs to, you know, needs to stick over the fabric, stick over the paper. 
it's on the cover so it needs to be you know pretty well glued down Oops. now put glue on the cover oh dear <laughs> okay so we're just going to pop that down there like that and let me just get my wipe to mop up any excess glue so I dabbed a bit on there by accident when I was squeezing the glue out okay so we just press it down get all the excess glue it's seeping out okie dokie and then just trim that off okay that looks really nice and then I think just press that down it's seeming kind of a little bit inclined to want to come up so I'm just pressing that down and I've also got these charms that I received in happy mail over here and I think there's yeah I thought there was there's an L and just get the L checking what the other ones are yeah okay so I'm just going to get the owl and probably I want to put something else there so I think what I might do is grab in from my stamp charms so my little stamps that I've got ready made as charms here and I've got this orange one which again is a good color isn't it on this journal so I'll put this back Oops, can I manage it without pulling the whole thing down? Oh, yep. Sorry, I'm trying to be super, super tidy, you know, as I go, just tidying everything up. Which of course does not come naturally to me. So I'm just going to punch a little hole in here. Just in the corner. Okay. And grab my bulb pin. Okay. So I want to just have that hooked through there, I think. Do I? Do I? Yeah. Or what I could do, actually. I wonder whether I could punch a... Oh no, I've got that lace on there as well, so I'd have to peel the lace off a bit, but I could do that. And then I could punch a little hole through there. All right, let me get my crocodile back out. Oh gosh, I hope this is going to work. I don't just put a great big hole in my book for no reason. Oh well. In for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. So just going in there. Like that. Oh, that was that was tough. That was tough. Uh oh, look what I've done. Super close to the edge of that book. That's a bit too close for my liking. So, hmm. Oh, that's so annoying. I had a horrible feeling that was going to happen. Let me just see. It's a little bit vulnerable, to be honest. That's really irritating. Well, I'm going to do another one. Can you see what's happened? Let me show you. I've punched it right on the edge of the book. So I'm going to just go further along, slightly higher than that one, and I'm going to try and punch it in slightly further in. Let's hope I'm doing it right this time. Oops, otherwise I'm going to just have holes all the way along all the way along the spine okay right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue with some hot glue this down to cover up where that hole is because um you know you don't want to see obviously the two holes and then I'm going to just do that here on this side as well so that that's covered up okay so you know Obviously, I know it's there, you guys know it's there, but I mean, hopefully if you were looking at the book, you wouldn't know it was there. And then, where's my bulb pin? Here we go. Oh, 
This has turned out another how not to do things, hasn't it? But never mind. Right, so go in. Come on. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay, so then I want to put my owl on. Come on. This is just super fiddly. The type of thing that I find super fiddly anyway. And then my stamp. And then obviously close my bowl pin. Oh gosh, come on. Cannot see at all what I'm doing here. Is that closed? Yeah. Okay, right, got there eventually. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a bodge there and a bit of a mistake, but you know, it's all worked out fine. And then obviously these just they're not long enough, obviously, to tie in a bow or anything like that. But that's fine. They can just loosely tie in a knot at the side, which I think is really nice. And then I think I would quite like to have a book plate on here as well. So let me just grab my book plates in. And let's just see what one would be nice. Maybe Yeah, I quite like that. I'm not quite sure where. But I definitely quite like it somewhere. So yeah, let me just look down on it and see. Probably not down there, weirdly. Maybe there. Maybe higher. I quite like it there, I think. Or would it be better here? Maybe here is quite nice. Yep, I'm going to pop it on there. So I'm just going to hot glue this down. Try and go quite close to the edges without burning my fingers. And then a bit through the middle. And then just pop that down just across there like that. Okay. Right, get out any seeping glue from the the sides. Okay, so that's probably it, I think, for my cover. I don't think it really needs anything else. I think it looks good. Oh, except for here, sorry. I, I nearly forgot that back bit. So to just cover that up, I think all I'm going to do is just take a little tiny bit of lace. Like that. I'm just going to stick that on there because I think that looks really, really nice. It doesn't really need kind of anything else. I mean, you could put a whole strip down the edge, but you know, that might just look too much. So, just a nice little piece, I think, is just what the doctor ordered. Just like that. Okay, just help that down a bit with some hot glue. There we go. Gorgeous. So yeah, I really like how that looks. I mean, it's quite different for me, to be honest, having the um, metallics and things like that on there as well. But I love how it looks now. Really, really pretty. And I love these tassels on there. They're just so super cute. So yeah, I hope that you found some inspiration there and, um, and you've had fun if you did an altar book junk journal. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys again soon. Thanks then. Bye.